uh, our first speaker is also from SIPIT. Uh, he'll give you uh, an overview on what we're doing. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Jeremy. So uh, Jeremy Werner uh, was appointed dot &E's chief scientist in December of 21 after starting at dot &E as an action officer for naval warfare. Uh, before then, he was at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, where he founded data science-oriented military operations research team that transformed the analytics of an ongoing military mission. Previously served as a, a research staff member here at uh, Institute for Defense Analyses, where he supported uh, dot &E, uh, in the rigorous assessment of variety systems and platforms. He received his PhD in physics from Princeton University, um, where he was an integral con contributor to the compact muon solenoid collaboration in the experimental discovery of the Higgs boson um, at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Uh, he's a native Californian, received his bachelor's degree in physics from the University of California, Los Angeles, and he was where he's a recipient of the E. Lee Kinsey Prize. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy. Yeah. I know, it was a mouthful. Uh, so where are, my, where are the slides? Okay. This is just, so just, just see Got it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, everyone can hear me all right? Okay, cool. All right. Um, well, good morning. Thanks for coming. Um, and uh, hope you enjoy this brief um, about uh, Sip It. Strategic Initiatives, Policy, Emerging Technologies within the clicker. Okay. Um, got it. Within uh, dot &E, Director of Operation Assessment and Evaluation. Uh, so here's the table of contents. I don't think I'm going to get through everything, right? Um, but let's just get started. Okay. So why did we stand up this new organization within dot &E? Right, dot and &E's primary function is to test the efficacy, perform independent test and evaluation of the efficacy. Sure, of the efficacy of uh, America's uh, weapon systems. Right, that's uh, fundamentally what we need to do. And so we have uh, four war fighting de deputates that uh, help us with that. Right, we have uh, air warfare, we have naval warfare, we have land and expeditionary warfare. And then we have net centric and missile defense. Um, however, we saw a need to um, prepare for the future, right? Of 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 uh, test and evaluation of future joint war fighting concepts in in particular, right? And so we couldn't stand still. We have to revitalize and recapitalize, right? Our tools, our methods, our techniques, right? To prepare for that future. So um, what I'm going to go over. In this briefing is a review of our mission, right? Um, inclusive of our structure and priorities. Um, and then I'm going to discuss our implementation plan, right? That's focused on um, implementing dot &E science and technology strategy. Um, going to discuss our functions. And uh, the objectives are, are down there, right? Just sort of um, describing who we are, why, why we exist, and what we're doing. Right, um, and then also provide examples of some of our products and deliverables. Okay, so uh, kind of like I stated before, our core mission is to drive continuous evolution, right? Because we need to be ready as a nation for the test and evaluation of future joint warfighting concepts as, in, as well as other emerging technologies such as hypersonics, directed energy, um, cyber, et cetera, right? So that's why we're here, right? Is to prepare the nation for the rigorous test and evaluation of the future joint warfighting. Okay, um, history, uh, dot &E, as I think most of you know, was created in, in, in the 1980s to be kind of the truth teller, right? To be the um, source of authoritative truth on the efficacy of our weapon systems on uh, behalf of Congress, right? For Congress. Okay, um, and in 2021, uh, our division or deputate was was stood up uh, for the purposes I already mentioned. Um, so we're in addition to um, being that sort of driving force of continuous innovation. Along with that comes you know policy, right? Uh, guidance, 
uh, training, instruction, and so on and so forth. So we'll, we'll get to that too. Okay, so our, this slide describes our key functions, okay? Uh, again, one of our recent deliverables has been an implementation plan to execute and fulfill our science and technology strategy. Uh, that implementation plan is going to be made publicly available, I believe, in a matter of days or weeks, not months, right? So soon that will be available on our, on our website uh, for, for, for everyone to uh, access and read, right? And it discusses the gaps that, that, that need to be filled to transform t &E, um, you know, the infrastructure, the processes, the tools, as well as, and this one is very foundational, upskilling the, the workforce, right? Um, how do we prepare the, 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 our workforce for this sort of broad challenge, right, of, 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 of testing future joint warfighting concepts and, and other emerging technologies? Okay, um, data management, right? The DOD has a very ambitious um, data strategy, right? And the DOD also has five data decrees. Right, which were released on May 5th, 2021 by uh, Deputy SecDef, right? I don't have those five um, memorized. However, I can tell you uh, that they're fundamentally focused around the, the, the concept that our department needs to create data advantage. And in fact, that's what the memo um, conveying the five data decrees is titled. It's titled Creating Data to Advantage. Um, no matter which organization within the DOD you're from, um, all DOD data is an enterprise asset, and it has one singular owner. That owner is the federal government, right? And the vision for data, right, within the DOD is essentially this. If you have a, the clearance and you have the need to know, you should have API access to the data. It shouldn't be, hey, I'm going to go and, um, you know, email someone from this organization and get it, right? That data should be sitting in a database, right? And uh, your CAC should, or, 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 or equivalent for, for, for classified systems, should enable you zero trust access, right? Secure, uh, automated zero trust access to that data, right? Um, okay. And uh, in addition to other things, I'm dop and es chief data officer. Right, and I'm definitely focused thousand percent on implementing DOD's data strategy in five data degrees. Workforce development. We can't get anything done without our people. Right. I think the um, um, colonel yesterday um, did an excellent job in in focusing in on how people are are so important. Right. And 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 of course that's that's also the case for the SecDef. Right. We got to take care of our people. We've got to make sure that all of our people are ready. Right. Um, to to perform our, our role of keeping the nation secure, right? So with that in mind, we have a chief learning officer, Kristen Alexander, right? Who's uh, very focused on, 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 on providing training, right? And, um, and, and, and examples and coursework um, and so on and so forth to provide that upskilling. Uh, portfolio management. Again, we have this, this, this implementation plan to fulfill a lot of the gaps that we've identified and move the department forward, right? Uh, so CIPID action officers such as myself and Kristen and Tyler were focused on managing the portfolio, portfolio um, under Dr. Sandra Hobson, who's our team leader um, back there. Um, and, uh, and, and there you go, uh, report generation, right? In addition to uh, everything I've said, uh, there's going to be a SIPIT section in our annual report, which we make available to the public, right? Um, and why do we make a report available to the public, right, in the first place? Because Americans need to have confidence that our department is ready to, um, to deter our adversaries, and if that fails, defeat them. Okay. Um, and we're also responsible for generating, again, in addition to training um, and strategic planning, policy, guidance, right? Um, I've actually been very surprised um, to hear the kind of, the, the want for, for, for guidance and, and examples, 
right? I would have thought, well, like, I don't like to follow rules. Why would anyone else, right? But I, I, I think, um, I, I, I guess that's not the right mindset, right? People are, are, are trying to figure out, hey, how can I do the right thing? How can I get this done, right? And they need to be provided guidelines and, and, and instruments, if you will, and procedures for doing that. So we're very much focused on, on that as well. Uh, finally, market research. Again, um, um, I'm, I guess, we're not a lot of titles, sorry, but, but, but a science advisor, uh, another role I have is to identify and conduct market sensing to discover what cutting edge technology we can use uh, and leverage for T&E, okay? Um, obviously, I can talk a lot about data, so uh, relational databases, non-relational databases, data lakes, um, automation for, for analysis, right? To be able to conduct the analysis of future joint warfighting concepts across multiple domains um, is not a desktop, desktop exercise. It, it requires an industrial computing and analysis infrastructure, right? That's automated. Um, and I say that it's automated not just for speed, but just to do just the complexity of the problem. It means that we're going to have to pull a lot of different pieces from multiple systems together, right? And so it's not adequate to look at the analysis of one system in isolation. Instead, that, that analysis must be integrated into a larger scheme for, 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 for understanding um, the, the high level effects and synergies and, 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 and emergent phenomena of joint warfighting. Okay, um, this one, this slide discusses our priorities and objectives uh, for this fiscal year. Coordinate and execute dot &E strategy I plan, okay? So again, we've released our I plan and we're focused very much on, um, on, 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 on executing it, executing the various tasks um, that will lead to transformative changes to t &E infrastructure, tools, processes, and workforce. And Congress has funded us um, uh, heartily to, to, uh, to, to get at this large problem space. And it is a very large problem space, right? Um, as we're doing that, we're going to, in parallel, um, develop uh, the I plan for the next fiscal year. And the I plan will um, be updated on an annual basis so that we're on an, in an ongoing fashion identifying and closing gaps, um, collaborate on updates to policy, right? And, 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 and guidance and training. We're at dot &E, we cannot solve the world's problems um, by ourselves, right? Um, and so uh, we realize that we must, to be successful, right, in our mission, in dot &E's mission, and for DOD writ large to be successful in its mission of deterring or winning wars, uh, we need to work with everyone. We need to think as an enterprise and operate as an enterprise. Um, and that means building up policy and guidance in a collaborative way with the services and other OSD components. Um, because we realize that they are stakeholders. Okay, um, another thing that we're doing is standing up a software and cyber innovation center, uh, which Congress has asked us to do. Uh, there's a clear recognition that um, we need to improve cyber, right? We need to improve the, the, the cyber survivability of our systems and our department. Um, and to do that, we need a workforce, right? Cyber is a warfighting function, right? And so we need to stand up the workforce to assist the militaries in that warfighting function. Um, and so that's what the software and cyber um, center of excellence is going to do um, through uh, cutting edge R&D, uh, leadership and collaboration across the t and &E enterprise inclusive of, of, of such things as, as internships and scholarships to create that pipeline into the DOD workforce. Okay, now um, our science and technology strategy um, was updated and I would say greatly clarified 
and improved upon by uh, the honorary uh, Nick, Mr. Nicholas Gerton, our, our director, right? In June of 2022, I believe is when we, when we released our updated um, strategy. And uh, it's very succinct and short. It's like uh, five to seven pages roughly, right? Um, and, and, I, and I also think it's, 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 it's pretty clear. Okay, um, we have got five pillars. Uh, test the way we fight. Uh, what does that mean, right? Again, future joint warfighting concepts. Somehow we need to go from the kind of current or, or at least past um, thinking about t &E that we're evaluating a single system, right? And move into a future where we're evaluating the actual joint warfighting concept, if you will, or, or operations that are, you know, I guess people like to say systems of systems. I like to say high level mission effects. Um, so we need to standardize the development of a scalable and adaptive representation of the multi-domain operating environment. Uh, it's clear for a number of reasons that we're not going to be able to do everything in live test, right? That's just the fact of the matter. Uh, it could be because of classification. It could be because we don't have 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 the right physical threats. It could be because we can't you know scale high enough to 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 um, to the actual threat lay down or scale high enough in, in, to the representation of our own blue forces in 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 the live physical domain. Well, what that means is we're going to have to depend more upon modeling and simulation going into the future. Right? That modeling and simulation needs to be credible. It needs to be data backed. Um, and, and so I think that's, that's one large part of, of the test we weigh, the way we fight, but we also need to make improvements and, and kind of, um, revitalize our physical infrastructure as well, right? Um, things like how are we going to test hypersonics? What is the range to, to do that look like? So on and so forth, right? And then of course there's the electromagnetic spectrum, um, in, environment, right? How are we going to properly represent that in, in, in the live domain? And then also, how is that going to be integrated in with virtual constructive modeling and simulation capabilities, right? We can't think of these as being sort of separate things. It all has to integrate up and together. Okay. Um, enterprise level t and &E data management solution. I think I've kind of described that already, but let me put it this way. Um, we need to go from the platform, right, uh, on range, uh, have the platform being streaming uh, a reduced data set um, over the air, that data needs to hit uh, a, a binary database, if you will, of like the sort of native system um, data objects and models, right, at the range. That data then needs to be transformed into something that's in an open format, from there, it needs to be transformed into something that's really amenable uh, to high-level performance analysis. Um, and then finally, the, the artifacts of that high-level performance analysis need to be, be put up into Advana, right? Is the system effective under this, in this context? Is it suitable? Is it, is it, is it um, lethal, right, um, in this or that context? Uh, that needs to be put up into Advana because that's the data that, that um, high-level leadership in the DOD wants to see. Um, and, and I would argue that this all needs to be automated and done over a network um, in, in, in close to real time, um, at least fast enough to inform um, tactical operations, right? So, so what do I mean by that, right? And this is good, maybe getting a little bit outside of, 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 of our natural swim lane, but if as a teeny community, we can't turn around our, da our data from test, right? Um, um, as fast as, as actual combat might play out, how could we expect the military to, right? And so we need to be able to do things fast uh, on that same sort of timeline. Okay, um, number three, I've got 10 more minutes increase the survivability of DOD in contested environments, right? Uh, the threat is real, the threat is out there, right? Um, some, and it comes in many different flavors and forms. 
Um, two forms are the electromagnetic spectrum or electronic warfare, whatever you want to call it. And another form is cyber, right? We need to be laser focused on these two threats to the survivability of our, of our systems and operators. Um, and, 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 and we are. Um, and we also now have to deal with the fact that uh, space is, is, is now a contested environment, right? And we have to figure out how to test, well, space, right? Uh, I don't think we can just go and blow up satellites. So there, again, is, a, is, is an area where we're going to have to heavily depend upon modeling and simulation. Okay. Um, and then finally, mission-based risk assessments for our software, right? Um, not looking at, oh, well, hey, I can, you know, use this sort of attack vector and, 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 and uh, get something, get this light to blink or whatever the case may be, right? What's the effect on the mission, right, is, 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 is the question. If, if someone hacks into our systems, right, and, and, and makes one of them not work properly, what is the downstream effect to the mission? Um, okay. Pioneer TNE of weapon systems built to change over time. Uh, increase the use of credible digital twins in test and evaluation, right? So the, the idea of a digital twin is that, you know, a specific hole or tail number, right, has some data connectivity, if you will, to uh, its, its digital representation. Um, one thing that's really cool about that is, is in that digital representation, I can throw it into a larger digital world. With, with, with lots of different platforms and so on and so forth, both red and blue, right? And so I can really start to interrogate those high-level mission effects, right, in ways that it would be really, really difficult to do um, in, in the live domain. Um, evaluate the operational and ethical performance of AI-based systems. Uh, you all might be aware that... Um, in, in, in the past, sometime in the past several months, uh, the DOD updated its policy on uh, autonomous weapon systems for the first time in 10 years, um, right? W when you look at an autonomous weapon system that might pull a trigger or, or cause some other kind of lethal effect, right? Um, obviously, we have to be very concerned that um, the mechanics governing that lethal process are, are, are ethical and um, within the, the, the norms of, 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 of our moral society and, and obviously the law, right? Um, so how do we um, ensure that our AI systems are, 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 are meeting our, 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 our norms and laws and so on and so forth? Okay. Um, more and more, um, systems capabilities are moving from being hardware defined to being software defined, creating a different sort of paradigm um, and a new equity for DOT&E uh, in terms of, 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 of ensuring that systems are being properly architected to gracefully change over time because software is never done. There's always the next drop, right? Now, the good news is software is also very amenable to repeatable automated testing. Right. Also in virtual domains, kind of off-life platform. Uh, so how do we work through that? Okay. Um, finally, identify and track T and E workforce competence competencies and capabilities. The world is changing. The world is changing very rapidly. Um, how how do we keep up? How do we ensure that our workforce has the skills that they need? How do we ensure that we have the right data engineers in, in place to build these data systems? I'm talking about. How do we ensure that we have the the, 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 the software engineers to take prototypes and, and, and algorithms that analysts might develop and actually turn them into production software that's doing analyses in real time or, or at least over networks in an automated way. Um, and, and, and also just the, 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 the sort of general art of test and evaluation. How do we ensure that, 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 that we're preparing the sort of next generation of, 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 of testers, if you will, uh, for them to be be um, kind of 
um, indoctrinated into this art and science, right? Um, it, along with bringing in the sort of new skills that, that, that they're learning in, in colleges and universities and so, and so on. Um, finally, assess and address critical PE workforce professional development needs, which I think goes hand in hand with, with, with what I've already talked about. Um, you know, this is a great slide. This says who we are, what our roles are. Um, again, already mentioned Dr. Sandra Hobson as, as, as being our deputy director and team lead. Um, there's me on the right. There's our executive officer, Paul Lowe. Uh, we're gonna have a cyber advisor named very soon. Um, we have our emerging technologies advisor, uh, Dr. Tyler here. We've got um, Dr. Kristen Alexander as our learning officer and chief AI officer. Um, and then we'll also, we also have a, a software advisor that should just say software, uh, Nilo Thomas. And then finally, we'll be bringing on uh, another data expert. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, six field activities spread all across the, 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 the country, um, joint live fire program, aircraft survivability program, joint technical program group munitions, uh, center for countermeasures, our, our, our Intel wing, um, which is really cool. Sorry, they're all really cool, but um, I, I'm just, I'm fascinated by, by, by the intelligence community and what the intelligence community can, can, can bring to the, 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 the war fight. Um, so we have Tetra, our t and &E threat resource activity, and then finally joint test and evaluation program. And I see that I have four more minutes and I think I've kind of covered what I wanted to. So, um, so I'm, I, I'm just really ha be happy to take, uh, take any questions you might have. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh, a question back there. Hi, uh, thank you for your talk. Um, as someone who's relatively new to the dot and &E world, um, what kind of deliverables does SIPIT uh, produce? Is it, you know, policy guiding or is it, um, I guess I'm, I'm wondering how uh, the people who are observing tests communicate with SIPIT um, on, on what's emerging or what's coming next. Sure, so that's a great question. Um, I'll, do, I'll do my best to, to, to address it. Right. Um, um, our, our deliverables, our policy is one of them. Right. Um, um, we're, we're building companion guides to go along with some policy that we're working on right now. Right. Um, for for T&E spans a number of different topics in T&E. Right. Including like temp development, <laughs> test strategy development, uh, modeling and simulation, uh, data management, um, software, cyber, so on and so forth. So after we release that policy, which, which I think we hope to in, in, in the coming months, maybe over the summer, um, then, then our next step is to, be de to develop companion guides. And the companion guides are really gonna delve into the, how do you actually implement this, right? And, 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 and provide um, the procedures and, and, and examples for, for, for doing so. Um, in, in, in addition to that, um, one of our deliverables is, is, is going to be, um, again, kind of on an annual basis, updating our iPlan. Another deliverable is going to be um, including a section on, on SIPID activities on, in, in, in our annual report. And then, and then finally, we have a number of pilots and prototypes, right, that are going to be coming out and, and made available to the community. Uh, these include a, a variety of, um, of, 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 of software prototypes, a variety of studies. Some are focused on AI, some are focused on modeling and simulation. Um, we're also really heavy into writing articles, right, for the community and kind of spreading the word. And, 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 and uh, I would guess kind of showing, showing both a vision, uh, but also how we're actually going to achieve that vision. Does that address your question? Okay, thank you. Any others? I don't think we have time for another one, but oh. you could probably reach uh, Jeremy or anyone. Okay. You got a quick, a quick one? No. All right. Go for it. Go, go. Go. 
Thank you. How does DOT and E want to uh, address policy changes when it comes to working with like Afotech and the different test centers in terms of like making sure that we can do tests and evaluation in an agile way quickly? I guess the word I would use is collaborative, right? Collaborative. Um, we want to be there to 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 help in meaningful ways. Um, if 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 the policy or the examples are not there. We want to generate them, um, and so so we want to to work with all the services, right, and and other OSD components to to ensure that 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 we're prepared for the future. Does that answer your question? Uh, sh okay. Well, we can talk then.